while ago, I came across an article saying this architecture is being wasted on five-year roads. And it showed a picture of a new super cool kindergarten in Copenhagen. So I decided to check out what architecture is being built for the youngest citizens of Copenhagen. Come and join me! First, I have to show you the kindergarten from the article, because it's quite different from a normal one. The building is located between tiny hobby houses in Frederiksberg and some larger apartment housing on the other side. Breaking it down into smaller volumes helps link the different scales and create a more homey environment. This doesn't look like an institution, but rather a child's drawing come to life. The architects put a lot of effort into simplifying the facades and the pitched roof, hiding gutters and anything a kid wouldn't think of. This is how a child draws houses. The choice of color is a bit unusual for a kindergarten, but I think it fits the Scandinavian aesthetic quite well. The interior is light and playful. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Okay, let's go to the next one. We are here in Northhound, one of Copenhagen's newest hip areas. Northhound is a former industrial harbor. Because this was never a residential area, there was no need for schools or kindergartens nearby. When apartment buildings started to appear, this changed. Insert Copenhagen International School. One for each different age group. This allows children to easily find their way and also caters to their specific needs. Classrooms for the smallest children, for example, are much larger, allowing kids to play inside. volumes sit on top of this ground floor base. It accommodates common areas such as gym, canteen, library and performance spaces. It's super convenient because children can still use the common areas even after school hours. On top of the ground base there is a rooftop terrace which is an excellent place for the youngest children to play safely outdoors. One of the most interesting features of this building, however, is the facade. This sequin-like effect was achieved by 12,000 solar panels, which apart from making it look super cool, also produce more than half of the school's electricity. Now let's go to another new residential area, this time near the city center. Welcome to Carlsberg Buen. If the name sounds familiar, it is because the famous Carlsberg beer was made right here. After the breweries moved out of the city center in 2008, many of the industrial buildings were left empty. And since this area is right in the heart of Copenhagen, a new development project emerged. Its main objective was to transform the historical neighborhood from an industrial into a residential, office and recreational one. A rather fancy one too. Of 
course, since you're introducing new housing, you must also take care of people's children, build new schools and kindergartens. The European School is one of them. right in the heart of the district. Uh, it is surrounded by quite a few architectural monuments. So it was pretty obvious from the start that this won't be like any other normal school building. It had to be quite compact and find clever ways to incorporate outdoor playgrounds into the building itself and into the surrounding areas. It's a little hard to say where the schoolyard begins and ends. It's almost like the whole city has become a playground. The building consists of a nail-shaped volume, which accommodates the classrooms and a couple of auditoriums. The gym is in a separate building and the rest of the common spaces pyro around and on top of them. The canteen is underneath. The whole building is very open and playful and it invites people in. It's a very social space where children play together regardless if they study here or not. I think this corresponds well to the idea of having a European school in the first place. Because of the historic surroundings, the materials had to be chosen carefully. These red bricks are very specific to this location, and the architects wanted to use the same material, but in a different way to interpret, rather than copy, the historical buildings. Let's move on to the next one. This building right here is a great example how you can take a simple concept and turn it into something extraordinary. Our children culture house is the link between two existing buildings. The adjacent walls vary in height. This one is five stories high, and the one on the other end is only two. Not only that, but here in the middle, the new structure dips even lower, so it can allow the sunshine to reach the back building. The choice of materials is also quite interesting, and in big contrast to the surroundings. You immediately see this is no ordinary building, and children especially feel drawn to it. The walls and the roof are covered in aluminium, and square wooden frame windows are scattered around. What is more, inside these windows you see bright colors, which stand out from the facade and give the impression that something fun and exciting is happening inside. The last place I'm gonna show you is a very ambitious project called Kid City. It's a new sort of daycare for 750 children. Public officials have estimated that by 2025 there will be 22,000 more young citizens in Copenhagen 
and they have worked hard to accommodate them. Because of the large scale of the project and the danger of creating a very impersonal, generic institution, the architects have taken a very unique approach – to break down the building into small ones and organize them like a small town. Or in other words, a kid's city. thing you see when you come here is this giant golden gate, which is actually a basketball court. This place has everything a normal city would. Different neighborhoods, a museum, a town hall, a restaurant, which is the children's canteen, a factory, beach hotel and even a fire station. restaurant, kids don't just gather to have lunch, they also help the chef to prepare sandwiches and slice cucumbers. And the top floor is a greenhouse, where they grow their own vegetables. Kids here are between the ages of 0 and 16, and the place offers a lot of clubs and after-school activities too. One of the most interesting aspects of the project is creating a space where children with different interests and from different age groups can meet and find their own place. Mm -hmm. 